thanks on the uh, <coughs> to the name credit as a bit of a tongue twister. We uh, we have uh, you can buy Scrabble with a, with an E, um, but we discovered when we came up with the name that it was going to cost us twenty thousand euro. So uh, we'd already uh, pretty much committed to that course of action on on naming. Um, so we we flickerized our name and and now we have uh, an L and no E. Someday maybe we'll be able to buy the E. We'll have enough money. To do that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do. Um, I'm not sure. We, we've been around since 2009, um, a little bit under the radar. Uh, it's really not until this year um, that we, we began to trade as a company. Um, but for those of you who know absolutely, uh, have, have no prior knowledge about what we do, um, very simply, we are a search platform for, for experimental materials. Um, we aggregate product information, instrumentation information, and we structure it in a way that it's much more discoverable. Um, we're trying to put uh, some some good structure around information that is at the moment quite fragmented, um, and where we're slightly different to other aggregators in the material space is that uh, underneath the hood we're actually a, a data mining company. So we make associations between the materials that experimental scientists use and the usage statistics that are contained within your content. Um, the benefit of that from a scientist's perspective is if I'm making a decision about an antibody, if I'm making a decision about a transfection reagent, I really want to know where it's been used, has it been successful, what are the parameters under which it's been successful, and getting access to that information right now requires a lot of reading, it requires a lot of manual work. Uh, so we wanted to take some of the pain out of, out of that. Um, just before I get into what the product and looking how looking at how we like to work with publishers, uh, I wanted to give you a bit of a sense of what my own background is and what the background of the team. Um, I am actually a cell biologist uh, by training. I did a PhD in UCD, um, and really that was where uh, Scrabble started. It was it was at the bench and and really experienced and these types of problems firsthand, having lots of failed experiments and wondering, okay, was, was, the, was the problem that antibody that I bought or was the problem that that transfection reagent was defective? And really getting very tired of having an unanswered question there. Uh, and we, we kind of grew in, fell into the, the, the whole publication analysis thing. We, we knew we wanted to put some, some real data around the usage of this this type of uh, these materials, um, and we tried. We had we had slightly different approaches in the early days, but we what became clear to us is that content was the richest source of usage usage data, and that's when we that's when we really got into publication analysis and, and data mining. Um, Paul Phillips is our technical co-founder. Paul uh, comes from he's worked at various startups. He worked with, with Hospital Worlds, uh, who are actually one of Ireland's most successful tech stories. Uh, they were sold three years ago for 400 million. Um, actually, the biggest uh, tech startup ever to come out of Ireland. So uh, he was a senior engineer there for many years until he joined us. Uh, we now have five developers. Um, we also uh, did a funding round in August. Um, we brought in uh, two commercial angels, actually based here in the UK in Cambridge. Uh, both Tillman and Mark uh, are ex Alcam. If any of uh, you are familiar with that. Supply market out camera, one of the biggest antibody suppliers uh, in the world. Uh, so they, they, they actually, was, what was fantastic about getting children in the market involved was these are our customers. Right? You know, while we provide this platform to scientists for free, our commercialization model is, is built around advertising and marketing to, and, and, and data analysis for, for, for these types of companies. Um, so this is a real validation to, to get these guys involved. So what I wanted to talk a little bit about today was the problem that we're trying to solve in the context of your problem um, and of the publication industry. So I think I've already, I hope I've conveyed the fact that uh, we, we rely on, 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 content, on, on publishers to access full text content. Uh, and what was discussed in the text mining uh, sessions earlier on today was very, you know, was quite, quite relevant to what we do as a business also. So getting access to content is really important to us, so we're really interested in, in working with as many publishers as possible. Um, 
But we also have another strategy to our business that is a different type of collaboration that, that, we, that we're, that we're uh, working on uh, with one pu- publisher in particular elsewhere, um, but we're interested, we're keen to, to expand that. Uh, and that's where we develop um, a piece of ad technology. It's a new ad format. It, it, what we do is we, we power hyperlinking of materials within the meta sections of papers. So we, we have out-of-the-box technology that can be dropped onto your publishing platform is styled according to your design specifications. We don't really get involved in that, but we take all the pain out of making, ad, making high, you know mentions of, of materials, advertising touch points within your within your uh, platform. Um, so it's against that backdrop that I wanted to highlight some of the some of the problems that that, that publishers have. Obviously, advertising and, and scholarly publishing is a pretty sensitive issue at, at the best of times. Um, publishers have to be very careful that they don't compromise the overall integrity of their of their their content. Um, there's also a problem with with the banner. Okay, so the ban- banner is a staple ad, ad format. It's been around since uh, content started appearing online, um, but it's got a number of problems from it, from a reader's perspective. Um, scientific advertising has been largely untouched by the personalization wave that's occurring in in the broader consumer market. So. The ads that appear in front of scientists a lot of times have very little relevance to their personal needs. Um, so they have low click-through rates as a result. Um, from a supplier's perspective, it's, it's very hard to measure success. It's very hard to measure the value of a banner to, to my brand. And it's very hard for publishers to actually communicate that type of information to their advertising customers. And then from a publisher's perspective, I think it's, it's quite clear that you know, uh, the limitation in, in appropriate real estate what, within your site um, kind of puts a ceiling to what you can expect to earn from reven- in terms of revenue from advertising. Um, the click-through rates are low, so actually a model based solely on clicks can be quite limited. Um, and so, so overall, this kind of contributes to, you know, keeping overall, in, overall industry revenue from advertising in this market. At, at around 4% of total revenue. We think it's gradual that there's potential to grow that revenue. I don't think it's ever going to displace the, the subscription model or the, the, the paid model of, of, of access or, or indeed the, the open access model. But I think there's significant room for improvement on, on advertising yield for, for, for publishers um, that do use that revenue stream um, as a supplementary revenue stream for their business. So now, uh, given that I, we've kind of touched on some of the problems that we, we're, we're interested in at Scrazzle, I think what uh, I want to kind of just show you is a, a little bit about our own products, what, what, it, what they look like. Um, there's, there's three core bits to our business. The lead generation is what I've, I've really focused on so far. Um, but we also have an analytics product that's geared towards um, these companies that supply these tools and, and, um, uh, and technology. And also then, uh, what we call widgets is actually part of our <coughs> broader API strategy, which we're really just at the early stages of, but it's where we're building a structured database of materials. We're keen to allow other third parties to use that, some for free, some where they pay us, um, but we're really interested in engaging with people who might be interested in accessing structured material data for whatever reason. <coughs> This is uh, the prototype application that we have on Science Direct right now. Um, we engaged with Elsevier uh, about 12 months ago. Um, we were interested in their application store, but it, it evolved into more um, as we got into it because we asked for full, full text grants and it was the requirement that, that we, uh, you know, we do it. We did a deal with them, and, and it was fantastic. It was a, a very positive experience, I, I have to say. Um, I might be one of the few people to say that in the, in the data mining world, but certainly we got access to the content we needed and uh, could have happened a little bit faster than it did, but you know, we, we, did, uh, we did appreciate um, the opportunity to work with their content. Um, this is the, the end result. It's in testing right now, so um, what you're looking at here is uh, an article that's been enabled for this type of ad technology, the hyperlink of OmniScript RT kit that is mentioned in the, te- in the methods section when a user clicks on that word it can open up some t- type of, of placeholder, in this case it's a pop-up. Um, it doesn't have to be a pop-up, it can be whatever you want it to be. Um, the underlying technology is the same, how it's rendered is really up to the publisher. Um, we worked within their design specifications. 
what you're looking at here in terms of the elements that can also be used to supplement that at this, this placeholder, we have um, the article count, so that's how many times this specific material has been mentioned in all other content that we've analyzed. We also provide functionality that allows users to, to, to actually reach out to the, the community of scientists to ask questions about this product. If they've got a technical issue, you know, can I reach out and ask people? Um, and then the money part of it comes in when they click on view. That goes to the manufacturer's page where we build a customer on the back end so that customer will have um, an account with us. It works, the analogy really is, is if anybody, anybody here is familiar with how Google AdWords works, they have their content network and their own AdWords on, on search, it's the exact same model. Um, the customer is, is prepaid with us and then we split um, the click-through with the publisher that's hosting the, the, the technology. The benefits of this format, well, it's, it's pretty novel. Um, it's it's uh, something that, that it, it isn't widely available right now. Um, it's relevant. Um, we have context. We know a little bit about the user. We know a little bit about their research interests. Um, and we structured information to, the, to, to deploy it um, reliably. From a supplier's perspective, um, it's very transparent. You know, we, we have an analytics suite that they can use. They can monitor clicks. They can they see exactly where their traffic is coming from. Um, and from a publisher's perspective, we, <laughs> while it's still early days for us, uh, we feel that the click-through rates that we're, going to, that, that we're targeting are significantly higher than what, than what can traditionally be achieved with, with just banners. Um, also, the revenue yield has been much higher. Our click-through rates are starting at $3 because it's viewed as a premium, uh, as, as a premium product. So we're pushing from $3 minimum uh, we think we can push it up as far as seven or eight dollars, depending on the product. So there's significant um, potential for for interesting revenues. Then this is uh, the second part. This is this is our platform. This is Scrabble.com, and there's an affiliate deal here. So where we are working with a publisher, and you, the click doesn't go to the customer's page; it goes to us. So say somebody clicks on a related article in the, that I showed in the previous slide. In that case, we you've given us that user. If that user clicks from our platform to the customer's page, we also share that revenue with the publisher. So there's, there's multiple ways and multiple user journeys that can be used to generate, um, to generate revenue. So then this is uh, the analytics. This is uh, at an earlier stage of development, but the use case for this um, is from, from, a, from one of these companies' perspective. I want to know how my competitors are um, how they're doing. I want to know how their products are doing. So we um, have different data sources. One is, is an analysis of the content. So you can see, okay, this, the usage of this material, this instrumentation, there's heavy usage in this region. You can drill down on this map to state level, to city level. You can see exactly where it's been used. You can see overall trends around usage of, of either your own product or competitors' products. Uh, and this is the first part of what I, the, the API strategy that, um, that we have. So we're interested in, in sharing the information beyond just our platform. Um, one, of the, one of the problems that uh, our customers were telling, that, you know, when, when we were talking to their settings ago was they like to tell their customers that they've been mentioned in journalists. They like their customers to know about that. Um, the way that they manage that is they manually get people to read papers. And, they manually add them to their citation library, which is incredibly labor intensive. Um, these sites get a, lot, get a lot of page views, um, so what we do is we automate that. We, we feed links to relevant articles onto the page for a subscription fee, uh, and we can drive traffic then that way back to the publisher of that article. So I think I can probably skip over this one. Uh, these are just some of the customers that we work with. Um, I guess why I, you know, I was uh, pleased to be asked to come here today to, to talk about what we do. We are very interested in exploring new partnerships. We're working with, with elsewhere, as I said, right now. But our business is built on scale. I think the more publishers that we can work with, the more valuable our platform becomes as a, as a medium for advertising, the higher revenues we can command and potentially earn for our partners. Um, there's a number of ways you can work with us. Obviously, the ad tech is one uh, one way. Um, 
the company data provider is also something that's of interest to us, so we can associate uh, product mentions with, with your articles, uh, but we do need the full text content to do that. Um, and then on the R&D side, I just wanted to quickly finish with that. Right now, we just do simple product X as mentioned in this article. Uh, what's really interesting to us is the relationships between material entities. So, uh, where you've got an experimental problem, say it's an antibody, in this case it's a transfection reagent, it's very useful for me to know that that, that, that product works particularly well with a certain cell type. Which, this, this is just the example, but I think it, it was touched upon in the data mining talk earlier on as well. Uh, being able to pull that, that relationship information out of the paper, or out of lots of papers, and structure it then in a way that makes it actionable uh, is very interesting and has the potential to be tremendously valuable for scientists looking to run more successful experiments, understand and identify you know, sticking points and problems in their experiments. That's it. Thank you very much. Um, and I can take questions after. Thank you.